You're seeing growth from day one with your consulting that people kind of dream of, that people work towards. Do you do you feel that that's come from your efforts with community building or what do you think that's come from? Um, yeah, I had a thought about this the other day, to be honest. Um, it's definitely 100% been from community building for myself, which to be honest, I never actually rationally connected the dots that that was what it was from. So I realized I've spent the last two years seriously posting on LinkedIn and building a network around me as well as building out the marketing club which has become a community which at the time I didn't think I was building a community I was like oh I'm just creating a platform for everyone to network and then you know it was never really my intention long term to go out on my own it was sort of just something that I thought about when I was on mental health leave with a bunch of other things going on and then to be able to essentially I did one LinkedIn post announcing what I was doing with no idea that that was going to enable me to leverage the network that I've spent the last two years two years building to build my own business. I mean, like the one LinkedIn post I had, over 60 or 70 people reach out, 50 of them have potentially needed help, and that's what's taken me six weeks to get through. Like I've been back-to-back meetings every single day on top of actually now trying to fit in booked-in client work as well, and I'm still not even done. Mind blown. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a glitch in this. I feel like I'm in like a game, and you know, I'm like the character yeah. that's like running against the wall, and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, this is like, it's like the, it's like real life version of you always see um, cold email agencies or something like, we'll get you X amount of book calls a week. But this is like, you're actually doing that, and it's just through community. I don't say just through community, but it's through community. What? What does community look like to you? Like, kind of describe that a little bit before we go into talking about community building. Yeah, I think community for me, I mean, like I always, I always say that your network is your net worth. And I mean, it's a Drake, it's a Drake rap. (laughs) But honestly, it is so true. Like I genuinely thought, you know, like, oh, it's just great to connect with people and see what they're up to. And when I started on LinkedIn, It was purely because I felt like I never fit in where I was or like no one around me was anywhere near to where I wanted to be. So I was kind of lacking inspiration of like, where am I going in life? And Mm. I joined LinkedIn basically looking at what other people were doing. And I was like, oh my God, like that's like dream role or this is how I want to talk about myself or show up. And then I think building out really, I guess, an actual community that believes in what I'm doing I mean I've kind of created a rod for my own back now with LinkedIn because now everyone's like oh you always do reflection posts on a Tuesday and you always share something that you've struggled with or you're so honest about what you're going through and I think it's it's weird to me because for me LinkedIn is just like my personal diary that people happen to be able to read but Mm -hmm. for a lot of people the content that I post hits because no one else is as brutally honest as I've been about what I've gone through and I think I've kind of built a little community around that for me because I'm always the one that's willing to speak out about that kind of stuff when no one else wants to admit it. You know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. similar to Instagram, right? Like it's just a highlight reel. And I think LinkedIn for ages has been a highlight reel. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the people who are like seriously struggling and no one's talking about it? And, you know, everyone's like, oh, I made a million dollars in a year. And I'm like, cool, I'm probably 10 years off that. But in the meantime, if I can talk about what I'm struggling with in my day to day and that resonates with just one person, then that one person becomes part of my community. And like those are the people that reach out constantly. Like when I went on mental health leave, that was terrifying because I was like, no one's talking about being on mental health leave. No one talked about how they realized they needed to go on mental health leave. And then while I was on it, no one was kind of talking about like, oh, this is what I did to make myself feel better. And there's no silver bullet, but it's such a process. And as I was an like, American, oh, God. Pardon? Yeah, as an American, I've never heard of that before. Mental oh, health. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you I have to take it. it yeah. You have to take it as sick leave, which is crazy okay. because then there's a negative connotation to that already because it's like, I'm not sick. You know, I just need, mm-hmm. I just need a break and I'm calling it, it gets called mental health leave, which then makes you think, oh, am I mentally not okay? But mm-hmm. in reality, it's like, am I just really exhausted from all the work that I've done? Because maybe I pushed a little bit too hard. Mm-hmm. So there's like a whole process. And I think like part of that now that I've heard from so many people, that's allowed me to build my community because so many people resonate with things that I've said. And like I've said to you, I didn't see it as a community. I just saw it as myself networking with people who resonated with what I was saying. 
and you're not well let me not lead let me not lead like that but are you focusing on algorithm and uh, crm to follow up with people or you're just being a person you're just i'm you know, literally just being a person who unknowingly has connected with a bunch of people over the last two years that have been able to leverage for my business with no intention of leveraging for my business because I never thought I was going to start my own business. And yeah. then to have people, you know, like I had people reach out who have been following me in the work that I've done for the last two years. So when I did a post on LinkedIn saying that I was going out on my own, I didn't even have to pitch myself. People are like, we already know who you are. We know what your values are. We know how you work. We know the mm. work that you're capable of. We want to work with you. We just need you to tell us how. Mm. So it's like even, you know, the other day someone was like, oh, if you need like sales tips and stuff. And I'm like, honestly, I don't because I'm not even pitching. Like I'm not selling myself. People yeah. are already sold. People were sold a year ago. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> And do you, so you feel that the, the LinkedIn content is a big part of that. And I know you also have, um, actual like offline in-person events going on with community. And then you also have like Slack community that's going on as well. So you have the online element, you have the offline element. Um, do you feel like there's different aspects to online versus offline community, or is it the same exact people just virtual versus not virtual what does that look like for you um yeah i think obviously like with the with the slack community that i've built through the marketing club again that was like at the time like i said i didn't realize i was building a community i thought i was just connecting people who are all in marketing who needed to network with each other or lean on people for advice mm -hmm. and i think the people who are sometimes showing up online are different to the ones that are showing up in person but that was the whole point of building the community because a lot of things that have happened now is it's almost bridged that gap you know so when we run our in-person events there's people online who are like oh I would have never gone to this because I'm too nervous and didn't know anyone but now that I see 50 other people in the community are going this sounds like a really fun event that I want to show up with so I'm always on a mission to be like cool it's great that we connected online but let's meet in person Let's bring everyone together, kind of create that camaraderie that seems to never exist in business because people are mm. so siloed or think that they're competing with each other. And I'm like, unless it's direct competition. And even then, like, it's still so handy to just have a chat. And I think like no one has been, well, no, I mean, that was why I built it, right? Like no one, in my opinion, was doing that well. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, looks like it's me doing this, you know, like carrying the flag, leading the charge. Yeah. But it's been so rewarding to see people I've met with on LinkedIn who said they would have never come to an event in person not knowing anyone to then come to that and then be one of those people that consistently show up. And like another thing I've started now, you know, I went for a cold swim the other day because I hate cold water and wanted to challenge myself. And now and that, that was just with a friend and I posted it on LinkedIn. And now next week we've got like 10 people from LinkedIn <laughs> who are going to meet me at the beach to run in cold water and then meet for a coffee after. And I'm just yeah. like. <laughs> I did I did that at a, I was at a conference last week for Sin Lane and uh, there's somebody that's big in the D2C space, Nick Shackelford, and he did a cold plunge and got people to go. My first time, it was a different experience. It was a very different experience. It's so confronting, honestly, but I'm yeah. like, what better way, what better way to like bond over a fear of cold water and then we can all go grab a coffee afterwards and talk. Like it's just kind of like a beautiful little excuse to hang out. At that and I don't like getting in the ocean. I don't, I don't know about in New Zealand. What are the waters like there? Sharks, jellyfish, stingrays? Is there any concerns or is it, the American Not perspective? Really. It's, oh, go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's pretty safe, but I just hate cold water. Like I don't even That's like that. a lukewarm shower. So when I was, I was talking <laughs> with a friend and I was like, oh, we're both going through a lot at the moment. Like I feel like I kind of just need like a full body cleanse, but yeah. also to push me outside of my comfort zone and then realizing that we we're like, oh, okay, like this seems like we need to run into the ocean, you know, some kind of like cathartic baptism for our new <laughs> journey. Um, and yeah, now it's become a thing. And I'm like, God, I need to stop creating things that become things because now I'm yeah. going to have to do this every single week. <laughs> Carry those and the the client load. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, so you, you post once on LinkedIn and you get, you know, 10 people coming out to that. I, I think it's fair to say you have a bit of... Uh, 
like, you know, B2B influencers is becoming a thing, right? I mean, it, look on LinkedIn. If you see someone with a lot of followers posting about a software, there's the likelihood that they're getting paid for that. But so I think, you know, it sounds like the, just the following that you have on LinkedIn helps with that, right? But is there any strategies or, or any ways that you've really focused on fostering engagement and participation within like the Slack channel or turnouts to the uh, marketing club events or things like that? Yeah, I think a, a big thing for me with that is like, I'm an absolute people pleaser. So when I bring people together, I feel a real sense of responsibility to make sure that it's worth it for everyone. So, I mean, we've done like some of our in-person events, we've done speed dating before, which was really cool because it was just a great way, you know, like not romantic speed dating, just like business speed dating. And it was a great yeah. way for everyone to connect and introduce. And like, I didn't get to do it because I miscounted the numbers. So I didn't get matched up with someone. So I just ran the whole thing, but I didn't mind because then at the end of it, everyone got to connect and network. And I'm always making sure that like, that's, I'm kind of enabling that because people always I think like I'm very much the weird one for like reaching out to people or sliding into the dms and whatever and I'm like well I don't mind you know pushing pushing everyone to do that if I can and if I can bring people together and sort of be the I guess be the excuse as to why everyone is there and facilitate the conversation like I've kind of just admitted that that's like a hat that I'm going to probably wear for the rest of my life because that's what I'm doing. Um, and same with the Slack community. Like I'm always, you know, it's very much community management more than it is like facilitating certain conversations. But at the same time, I'm always, you know, asking people like, what are you working on? How are things going? We have like a wins channel where people share things and I'm always commenting and replying. And, you know, I think just, yeah, like if, if I'm the excuse that people need to connect with each other or bring people together, I've just sort of been like, cool, listen to me. This is I just what it. I'm doing from now on. <laughs> yeah. And just, just facilitating and, and giving instead of just, you know, hoping that there's a drawback from it or hoping there's a, there's a revenue coming in from it, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. And I mean, the marketing club is free. So there is no, I get other than like joy and satisfaction of bringing people together. There is no financial reward for me. And same with like the meetings that I've had with people off LinkedIn, like great if they turn out to be clients. But other than that, like I'm just keen to build out my network because I've learned that you mm -hmm. never know the people who are watching or the people who are listening or talking about you in a room that you're not in. And I'm like, this just feels like the right thing to do. And maybe I should have more of a business strategy or something. But honestly, I'm like the people who are strategic can go and be strategic. I just want to be human. And if it's on a business platform and that's how I stand out, like perfect, that's that's fine for me. I, I'm asking all these questions because I'm going to try to mirror what you do because I mean, the, 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 the concept of posting once and I mean, just, you know, the the engagement, the the support, everything that you have, you get 15 LinkedIn DMs a day selling that hope dream. Uh, so the fact that you've just built it out just by being you, right, is just phenomenal. Yeah. And I think like, like I said, like all of that honestly, like took me by surprise. Like I announced that I was resigning and that post got like 700 and something likes. I announced that I was going out on my own and that got like over 800 and something likes. I had, you know, within like a day, I had 150 connection requests. Like my LinkedIn was, I was like, I don't know how these like actual big LinkedIn deal people deal with this because I was struggling so bad. But it was so good just to see that like all that is is because of me being a genuine person and obviously being able to showcase the work that I've done or how I think or what I've been through and people just naturally connect with that because we're all humans talking to humans. But I think people forget that like that's actually what we crave and what we relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if, if somebody's looking to start community – um, is there any like top two or three things that you would say people need to focus on or maybe not focus on so that they're not getting too granular on, you know, the end goal and more so just actually build it out? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I always make sure is that there's value, right? Like all of us are so time poor and sometimes I feel a little bit iffy, you know, DMing someone being like, hey, join another Slack group because you're probably yeah. already part of 20. 
But if you can make sure that joining that group has value, whether it is educational, whether it is just networking, whether it's, you know, allowing people like a big focus this year with the marketing club has been getting uni students involved so we can support up and coming marketers, not just marketing professionals. Because at the moment, a lot of the unis here in New Zealand fall short on preparing uni students for what going out in the real world looks like. And then no one's willing to give them experience if they don't have it. So in my head, I'm like, cool, how can I bridge that gap? You know, is it connecting marketing professionals with uni students who might be able to, you know, create a pathway for internships? So I think as long as you're consistently providing value, like that's a big draw card for people to join a community. I think also it matters about like the purpose behind why you created the community. Like the marketing Mm -hmm. club is purely just to help marketers connect with each other. And that has been the goal from day one. You know, it's almost a year old now. There's almost 600 members, which is insane for New Zealand. Like New Zealanders don't really like to join anything, (laughs) especially marketers, because it's always so siloed. So to have almost 600 members in the New Zealand Marketing Club and almost 150 in the AU one, it kind of just shows that people want to connect. It just needs to be the right format and the right place and have the right amount of value to do it. And I think a lot of people get so caught up and like, oh, well, where is this going to go? And am I going to make money from it? And what is the strategy? And I'm like, sometimes the strategy can just be connecting people because that's all people want. You know, it's just connection. They want to feel heard. They want to feel seen, understood and relate to other people going through the same things. And if you can build a community off that, it almost just organically grows into something itself. And that's what the marketing club has. You know, like when I started it, I was like, oh, there'll be 20 to 30 people. Maybe we'll do a monthly catch up and that'll be it. And then a year later, there's almost 600. Mm. And I haven't even felt like I've scratched the surface of what I could do to push that community. It's just organically snowballed into this thing because people want to connect with each other. Mm -hmm. Do you find people are inviting friends and inviting each other to join the group? Yeah, we get so many people, you know, maybe it's a marketing manager in one company who finds out about it or I DM them on LinkedIn And the next thing they're like, oh, this would be really good for my whole team. And, you know, like one of my goals would be to partner with corporate so that when a new marketing hire joins, the marketing club is offered as a resource for Mm. all marketing hires to join because it's so often, especially in New Zealand and smaller businesses, to only have solo marketers or two to three marketers in a team who are expected to run global marketing strategies and it's like if you've never been there done that and don't have mentors in that space which more often than not there's not like how the hell are you supposed to do this stuff and I mean that's why I created it because I'd always been the first and only marketing hire in every role I ever walked into and I'm like I don't have a soundboard I don't have a mentor I don't necessarily always know what's best but no one's questioning me on anything and I'm like that can't be right like I'd love to be right all the time but I know that's probably not the case so to be able to go into the marketing club and lean on people who have been there done that you know know the lay of the land more than I do it's so valuable professionally and then personally I'm like I've just created a network with a bunch of people who think the same as I do or challenge the way that I think Mm -hmm. yeah and do you see yourself going into like conferences or or big type of events anytime in the future Um, I mean, I've been asked to speak at a few. Public speaking (laughs) kind of terrifies me. Um, But I mean, every event that I do, I always end up being the one that has to MC. So I'm like, okay, this is just this is just something that I've built that I'm going to have to live with. Um, And I mean, each time I speak, I get better and better. I think I get quite nervous because I know that I'm quite loud and outgoing. And a lot of events, people are very like, oh, this is this is what we're doing. And it's quite robotic. (laughs) And I get in there and I'm like, hey, guys, welcome. Like, what's going on? So it's definitely something I'm open to, especially as the marketing club gets bigger in New Zealand and then in Australia as well. I'm like, this is just going to become a thing that I'm going to have to get used to. I love it. I love it. Well, look, if you had to summarize everything we've talked about today into a marketing mindset, what mindset should marketers and business owners have when it comes to community? I think... The biggest thing would be putting yourself out there first. Like no one would have joined the marketing club if I hadn't built my personal brand up a little bit first. And I mean, even saying that I have a personal brand feels weird to me because I don't see it as a brand. I just see it as me. But, you know, people consider that a brand. So you kind of have to create yourself first and let people know who you are, what you're doing, what's important 
before you even have a chance of building a community. And I think, Mm -hmm. especially personally, right? Like if you're a brand like Nike, right? If Nike decide to build a community tomorrow that have hundreds of thousands of people begging for an invite and it's just, you know, like you've already done the work there, but for yourself, you kind of have to see it almost as a business. Like if you don't have brand awareness, no one's going to care and no one's going to join. And I think too, even just starting small, like I said, I thought I'd have 20 to 30 people and that was okay. Cause if I could give value to 20 or 30 people, that would have been job done for me. And to now think mm-hmm. that I could give value to almost 600 people, I'm like, this is insane. And then, you know, like the beach thing, I go and do that and suddenly other people want to join in and I'm like, cool, that was just a weird thing for me to challenge myself. And now other people want to do that too because they see the value in it. So I think just not not getting caught up with how you're going to start. Like a lot of people are like, oh, what's the plan? What's the 10-year goal? Am I going to make money off this? And I'm like, if your intentions are pure and you're doing it for the right reasons, which is pure, which should be to bring value to people, that's good enough. And whether it's only five people or 500, that's good enough. Like I think people need to stop focusing on the numbers because it's if you're genuinely doing it for the right reasons, then the numbers don't matter. You think skydiving's next? You went cold plunge. You think you could get a good I, people to go skydiving? I honestly joked about this with someone on LinkedIn the other day and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be the next thing that snowballs out of control and I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> go for it. I don't know. Is Groupon, is Groupon a thing in New Zealand? Yeah, they have Groupon. Okay. I, first time I went skydiving, it was a Groupon. Now that makes it sound like it might not be safe, but it was, but uh, go for it. it. It's a It's a crazy time. It'd, it'd be a great marketing tactic for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a Richard, uh, what's his name? The Virgin Mobile guy. Uh, uh, Richard Branson? Yeah, it's like something he would do. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have a piece of paper with my LinkedIn QR code. Yeah. Or <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, for anyone listening that's at the stage of figuring out what they'd like to do in the marketing industry, so the, the, the uni students you were talking about, for example, what marketing role or roles do you think will have the highest demand in the next three to five years? Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, that can be quite industry specific. I think because I've been in FMCG for the last 18 months or two years, I think I definitely see so much growth in that area because they are so diverse in that industry. Um, I think too, there's so much that can be applied in that industry that can then translate to other industries, which is something I never expected. I mean, I never had FMCG experience before I started at a reaper. And then now that I've had it, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I'd almost started with this because then every role, if I could have reversed my career and had every role after that, I still would have known what I was doing. Whereas to kind of come in at the back end of it and try figure it out, it still worked because I was applying all my other marketing experience, but it was just interesting kind of feeling like for the first time in my career that I was thrown into this whole new world that I didn't really understand. Mm. So I think, yeah, any kind of, any role like that that deals with a physical product or service I think is such good experience to get in marketing because it's not just then, you know, doing copy or doing ads or building a website. It's like you're dealing with customers, you're dealing with relationships, you're dealing with brand awareness. Like there's so many avenues within the, those marketing initiatives that help you become a better marketer and then help you become more on demand. Like I never never assumed that the things that I've learned in FMCG would be so transferable now in other industries as well. But people have seen that and been like, oh, well, if you can do that for a reaper, you can 100% do what we want, like no stress. Mm -hmm. You know, you can probably do it with your eyes closed. And I'm like, oh, like, we'll see. But, you know, it's just, it's been so helpful and I've grown so much and understand now all types of marketing, you know, like I, I get the traditional, I get B2B, I get B2C, I get D2C, I get FMCG, I get SaaS, I get products. Like it's just given me, yeah, such a good understanding of what I'm doing and knowing, being able to go into those conversations and being like, cool, if we're physically trying to attract people, what does that look like as an event, as a community? Or if we're online, what does that look like? Or what does digital look like? Or what is the tangible outcome of that? So yeah. I love it. You, you got the marketing mindset, little shameless plug there, and then, <laughs> and then fed into it. Yeah. Boom, boom. Uh, hey. And last question for you, where can listeners connect with you and learn more about uh, yourself and your consulting? LinkedIn. 
Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with LinkedIn. I'm basically on there all day, every day when I can be. Um, so yeah, that's the best place to connect. And I mean, I love just chatting with people, to be honest, like the amount of times I just DM people randomly being like, oh, I love what you did here. Or are you down for a coffee? Like I'm always open to chat and connect and I love having my brain picked if I can offer advice or wisdom, which sometimes feels weird. I'm like, am I allowed to give people advice on what I've been doing? Because I mean, I have imposter syndrome so bad every single day. Um, and especially now starting my own business, I'm like, am I allowed to charge for what I'm doing? Or am I just like bullshitting my way through this? <laughs> well, you're, you're doing amazing. Um, <laughs> you're, you're kicking butt with the, the lead generation better than most agencies that have been around for five plus years. So awesome to see yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome to see that. Glad to have you on today to talk about uh, community and I uh, appreciate your time with it. No, thank you so much. I'm yeah, so excited to do this. So thank you for letting me share a little bit. Yeah, of course.